Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for another story time today. We are going to be talking all about water. All of us need water to survive. Our bodies are mostly made up of water, um, so it is a very important part of our life. The same thing is true for animals. So during the summertime, some of my favorite places to go, even later today I'm going canoeing on the Mississippi and I'm super excited, uh, but some of my favorite places to go are along water because there's so much life around water. There's always tons of um, insects, which means there's tons of things that eat insects. And even some of our bigger animals, like our deer have to come down there to drink, our bear might go to there to drink or to catch some delicious fish. Um, raccoons often find food around waterways. And some of our really big, cool birds, like great blue herons and pelicans and eagles, we're gonna find all of them along water. So I always love exploring our rivers and our lakes and our ponds because there's always something new to find. Um, and there's just so much to see and explore and discover and it's always changing. Plus, in the winter time, when it freezes over, it's a little harder to explore there, right? Everything's under the ice. We can't see it. So we gotta do all that exploring during the summertime. So our book today is gonna be all about what's going on in those habitats. Um, it's called Over and Under the Pond written by Kate Messner, and the illustrations are by Christopher Silas Neal. And if those names sound familiar to you, um, it's because I already read you a story by Kate Messner, and the illustrations were by the same guy. Um, and it was called Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt. And we have one other book by her that we really, really love. So I'll probably read it to you this winter, so maybe you can guess what it's about. But anyway, this one's called Over and Under the Pond. Over the pond, we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through the reeds. How would you go over the pond? Yeah, very well. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them right now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. How many of you have ever seen those beetles that are on top of the water and they spin all around. Those are our whirly gigs. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunch. Got one hungry fishy hiding there. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. I bet some of you have seen turtles lined up like that on a log. We've got some other animals up here too. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close, kooklaree. Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. So the males are very colorful and sing loud kooklui to defend their territories. The females camouflage really well. They look a lot different and they hide on the nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. These are one of my favorite insects in the water. Look at the cool home she built for herself that she carries around. Sometimes out of plants, sometimes just out of pebbles. Over the pond, shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted its lunch.
Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on the shore. There, on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, what do you think's gonna happen? And strikes! It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. So they're very good hunters and you might see them stalking prey very quietly and without moving on the edge of the shore. Over the pond we drift. Heads tipped up to the sun, a woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. My favorite. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster fast jaws. So that is a baby dragonfly. How cool is that? Baby fish, did you know that? Over the pond, the shadows stretch, ospreys circle on quiet wings, raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears into the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up into shore as a far off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond. The prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. All right, we'll read the author's note. She also has information about all the animals that she mentioned in the book, and we don't have time to read all of that, but I'll read the author's note real quick. It says, pond and other wetlands provide homes for plants and animals around the world. A pond is one kind of ecosystem, an interconnected community of organisms that interact with one another and with their environment. If you look back through the story, you'll find many examples of those interactions, from the blackbird gathering grass for her nest, to the many animals eating plants and other animals as part of the food chain. In a pond ecosystem, producers like plants and plankton make their own food using sunlight, water, carbon dioxide from the air, and nutrients from the soil or water. Herbivores, like the fish, birds, beavers, and moose in this story, get their energy from eating plants. So herbivores eat plants. Carnivores, like the great blue heron, otter, and raccoon, eat both plants and animals. So carnivores actually just eat meat, so they just eat animals. So the great blue heron and the otter um, would be carnivores, they mostly eat meat. And the raccoon would be what we call an omnivore, meaning it eats both plants and meat. At the bottom of the pond are decomposers, 
Bacteria and fungi that break down dead and decayed plants and animals to return nutrients to the soil so the cycle can start all over again. Sometimes ecosystems are threatened by pollution or loss of habitat, but when things are going well, every organism has a job to do and together they keep their pond healthy. So we need all those organisms in our ponds to keep it healthy from the plants and the fungi and the bacteria all the way up to the bigger animals like our predators um, and our prey species as well. So that was our story for the week. I hope that you can get out and explore some water nearby you. It could be a pond, it could be a creek in your backyard, it could be a big river, it could be a lake, whatever you have in the area around you. But while you're out there, look around. Look at the big stuff, look at the small stuff, look at the plants, what do you notice, what do you see? And we wanna know all about it. But get out, explore, have a great, great, great week, and we'll see you next time for another story. Bye.